good evening or good afternoon, whatever it may be for those of you who are watching out there. I had a really fun, amazing, challenging learning experience this weekend that I wanted to share with everybody. Everybody that is um, committed to their growth, building their confidence, breaking through the walls that may be preventing them from connecting with people or giving their gifts to the world and giving their gifts out to people. And I just wanted to share this with you because one of the reasons I make these videos <clears throat> is it's a learning experience for me, so I'm getting something out of it. But maybe some of you out there will hear my experience and will feel together in this and we'll all grow together. So uh, this, this uh, weekend I was playing at a church in San Antonio. Now, I've been a improviser for over 30 years. And recently I've been practicing improvising solo violin cadenzas, just, just improvising <clears throat> in, in the, out in the wilderness or at my house and writing pieces just on the fly. Well, I was asked to do a solo impro improvisation as a part of this church service. And for those of you who know me, it's no surprise that, you know, I have, I've had challenge with uh, stage fright, nerves, things like that, but I don't let it get to me. I don't let it uh, prevent me but it's something that I've been working on for almost my entire life. Um, part of the challenge with this is, and <clears throat> with any kind of jumping out of your comfort zone or pushing yourself to grow, is that the, the bridges, the, the, the roadblocks are really in your mind. And it's all about, you know, pushing yourself past this fear zone. So I was asked to do a solo uh, improvisation on stage and front of possibly a thousand people with a spotlight on me, you know, walk out on the stage completely naked, not naked literally, but just no accompaniment, walk to the center of the stage, spotlight comes on, make something up completely on the fly, which for my skill set, making something up isn't a problem, but I do have still a lot of fear just pulling that off in front of a lot of people on live Facebook, all that stuff. It was just incredible production. And over the last three years, I've been working on that and that mental challenge. And I've been also following the work of Mel Robbins, who teaches people how to, you know, sort of turn the switch in your brain from fear to excitement. So I got a really unique, wonderful opportunity to work on switching that switch of my brain from, and I want to share with what share with you that experience and what kind of helped me push through it, but switching from a mode of fear to a mode of excitement. Uh, the thing for me it always has been has been the build-up. When I actually, actually walk out on stage and I'm actually doing the thing, usually the fear just completely disappears because I'm in my process and I'm doing my thing and my brain switches to excitement and I'm, I'm having a great time. But sometimes the hours and, and in the past, the days leading up to that performance have been excruciating. And it's been this excruciating mind game. And there isn't any, some people say just, you know, think of positive thoughts. There, you know, those things, those techniques don't work for me. Um, but <clears throat> what has really worked for me is accepting the feelings that come up and not fighting them and just letting them be there. And just letting the feelings be there. And it really starts to get intense, maybe five to... Between five to ten minutes up until that moment, I walk out. When the minute I walk up there, boom, it kind of disappears, and I'm able to channel that really intense nervous energy into the performance. So I'm going to share with you the video. Uh, I was able to channel that nervous energy, and I think, I think I did a pretty good job. And I learned a lot, though, and hearing the video and hearing the performance, that I gained, the basically the first time I did it was a little terrifying. Walking out there in front of maybe 500, 800 people, into darkness, waiting for the spotlight to come on, and it comes on, okay? But after that first time, and I, I was able to get it done, my brain switched into, wow, you can do this. This is, this is a lot of fun. And so then I was able to up the challenge, and okay, what can I creatively do for the next two performances? What would be really fun to bring, you know? And start having fun with the creative part of creating this solo in this blank canvas of a church, and it was just really fun. So uh, part of what I did was I had to create this really kind of dark mood with the violin. So when I started the solo, I was actually building off of the piece that was before me, and also my intention was to leave it off where the band would take, and harmonically, melodically, they could 
pick up where I left off. But as I'm improvising, I'm having a conversation. I'm watching the solo <laughs> sort of appear before me, and I'm kind of coaching myself. Okay, don't get too jazzy. Don't get too happy with it. This has to be a dark piece. And so I'm making adjustments as I go. What I ended up doing was um, I needed to be in, a, in C sharp minor because the next piece was going to be an E major. So I, I, I chose C sharp minor, and then after a couple times, I thought, well, I'm going to make it C sharp Phrygian because that even makes it even more dark and more foreboding. And then I started thinking, well, maybe I should do something with C-sharp octatonic. You know, how could I use an octatonic scale to really bring out the darkness? So then I switched into an octatonic flavor, and then I added some half steps and some kind of spooky uh, staccato strokes. And then I thought to myself, after I heard a couple of these performances, there is, needs to be some space in there. So this next video that I'm going to show you is the performance where I think it kind of all came together. So it's kind of like the devil's violin. There's a little bit of, of you know, the tritone in there. You've got this Phrygian scale. You've also got the octatonic scale. And then also there's some space in there for the audience to kind of reflect on that solo that just sort of reverberates out in the audience. And if I were to do this again, it's really cool to get the video and watch myself because I think I would look up into the audience more and maybe kind of have my posture more up. I feel like I was kind of looking down and maybe hiding from the audience. So if I, when I get the chance to do this again, I think I'd have some more motion in my physicality that could contribute to the character of the piece. So I encourage everybody out there to know that there is nothing special about what I did, that that the, the talent, if you're a musician or if you're somebody who's trying to push yourself out of your comfort zone and to grow and to grow beyond fear and to stop letting fear uh, reduce you or reduce your uh, options, that you can do it. <clears throat> you can learn how <clears throat> to rewire your brain. Now, I will share with you that before this performance, my brain was trying to figure out ways how to get out of it. My brain was going, oh, maybe you can, my, my, my fear brain was saying these messages, well, maybe you can get out of this by, you've got a cough, maybe you can get somebody else to do it. So your brain is always going to be telling you not to do something that is out of your comfort zone because it wants to, say, you know, wants to, wants you to survive. And a lot of this you can learn from Mel Robbins and the brain research. So, you know, if you want to do these things, if you want to grow and go past your, whatever your comfort zone is, there's nothing special about what I did. The, the talent lies in the ability, any musician, any performer, anybody that wants to do art or business and push themselves past the comfort zone, the talent is in that ability to sit with discomfort and to listen to those voices and not get in there and wrestle with them. But just to let that and to feel that discomfort. And I guarantee you, as somebody who has struggled with intense emotion and stage fright over many, many years, 30 years of being a musician, I want to give you this. This is my little gift for those of you that struggle with not just stage fright, but, but wanting to do something more in your life and grow. If you push yourself past that zone, it gets easier. The next time you do it, your brain's not going as crazy. The next time you do it, next time you do it, it kind of comes down, and then you can start asking yourself, well, how can I push myself even a little, or, you know, how, what's the next little baby step I can take? And if you take that judgment, if you just kind of watch your brain judge, for instance, I'm looking at the video, oh, okay, you know, a couple of those notes I could have played better, but I'm, I'm not going to say, you suck, like, oh, that sucks. I'm going to say, okay, how, you know, next time I can do this. But, Will, you did this. And so it really works. I just want to encourage everybody that is trying to grow as a performer, as a business person, as a human being, who wants to make a difference, is that you can do that. That the talent lies in just sitting with your feelings and that it gets better in anything that you're working on in your life. And uh, there's nothing special about standing up, getting on stage. There's, it's, it's not a God-given gift. If there is any gift, it's the ability to sit with discomfort and sit with hard feelings for long periods of time until 
you literally, with intention, rewire your brain to know that that's just an illusion. So that's you listen, you'll hear me start on a single note uh, to kind of center myself and create a melody. And I was following my ear, but I also had some intention of the actual scale that I wanted to express the notes. So that kind of gave me a little bridge to walk on and create the improvisation and create the mood. And so I've got the octatonic scale, the Phrygian scale, and also just some kind of space that I added to it. So I had that in my mind. I want to have space, a pause, dramatic pause, and I want to have staccato bowings, spiccato bowings, to create more of that tension. And also the blues is in there. Also the, the um, tritone is in there to create that feeling. Okay, enjoy this clip of me playing a solo improvisation in San Antonio before about a thousand people, I think, live in San Antonio, 2017. And I'd love to hear y'all's comments and what you are working on growing with in your lives. And let's do this together. All right, talk to you soon. Hey y'all, I'm back. Another thing I wanted to mention that was very interesting doing this gig in San Antonio. Another very interesting thing is for many years, since my high school days, I used to think I was the only one with intense stage fright, with intense fear, and that I was in the minority. And the more that I've talked to people, even people that I consider that look like they have no fear whatsoever, that they're fearless, I find out that it's very common, very successful people that are on stage and rocking it. Um, and what was interesting, I, I, at this church performance this weekend, I had two separate conversations. One with a Berkeley graduate uh, singer who was having a, just feeling like she was challenged on that performance and having this voice in her head you know, the, the judge in there, and, and I was talking to, with her about suggestions on how to deal with that judge, and kind of the brain science of it. She's probably going to be watching this video soon. And then also there's a, a saxophone player that I met, had a conversation with backstage right before we were going on to our first performance. He has a doctorate in saxophone, uh, and he was talking about his struggles too with, with you know, self-criticism and fear and things that come up during performance and that it took him four or five years to kind of work through that. So, and I was telling him, I said, if there's anybody out there that says they don't have any fear, then it's just not in that particular area. They're, they may have fear in other areas. They may not have it as intensely as we do, as some of us do, but, or maybe they're, uh, they've worked through it. Maybe they're at the place where, where they're at peace. Um, and, but I think it's a lot more prevalent than, than we believe. And I think a lot of people in the performing arts or in any area of life have this fear because we all have the brain stem. We all have the lizard brain. So I think it's a lot more prevalent than people like to say. And my arm is getting really exhausted holding the uh, 
the phone up here. But I wanted to bring that um, piece to the video. I'm going to put these all together. So we're all in this together. And it's all about retraining the brain, you know, and finding out what works for you. And for me, a lot of times, it's laughing. It's laughing at it. And I was telling uh, Rana backstage, the performer, that you can thank your brain for protecting you. Thank you, brain. Thank you for, for drawing that to my attention. Whatever your brain is bringing to that moment, that fear, that intensity, that when your brain says, don't do it, don't do that thing, you can say, thank you, brain. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. But I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Ha <laughs> ha. Laugh at it. You know what they say about when you smile, that research has shown that actually that you can fake it until you make it. You can actually make a smile and the brain chemicals are released. The, the, that when you do something with the body, well, that actually does work and it works for me. A lot of times if I'm backstage, one of the things I do is I'll, I'll actually kind of pace. I'll walk back and forth. That physical movement, you know, or maybe dance if I can <clears throat> right before I go on, uh, it brings my fear laser, oh, not laser, my lizard brain brings it down, it calms it down, and I'm in the moment, and I'm excited about what I'm doing. I, the key is to switch to excitement, to get away from, oh, i got to run from this, to, oh, I'm excited to get out there. This is going to be you know, an opportunity to, to show what I've got, and I'm you know, really excited to do it. So I want everybody that's watching this, that's very interested in, in growing in this way, to check out Mel Robbins, because she has a whole technique and a whole beautiful system on how to switch the brain over from running to running to it, to being excited about that. So.